Good afternoon, boys and girls. It's Ms. Jenkins here. I'm ready to work on a project with you guys. I'm excited to teach again. I miss you all so much. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is this here. We're going to be doing a patterned landscape together. And this project is for kinder and first graders. Um, however, anybody is welcome to go work along with me. I'm going to show you this project step by step. Uh, let's begin with what materials you'll need. You'll need a white piece of paper, uh, 9 inches by 12 inches or larger. Um, you need a ruler. You need pencil. You need a marker, a black marker, or a black um, permanent pen. You'll need an eraser. Um, and then for your colors, you can either use um, markers or gel pens or colored pencils. You've got choices there as far as color is concerned. All right, let's get started. So to begin, we're going to start with our foreground, which is going to be our ground, like our hills, which is going to be closer to the bottom of your paper. So you'll draw your first hill across your paper like that, going sort of at a hilly diagonal and another diagonal like this. Notice how this diagonal hits this hill here, making it look like this hill is overlapping this hill. Then we'll do another one like this. For first graders, you should be a little bit um, familiar with what we're doing right now because we've done it before. Um, okay, so we are going to make another sort of hilly diagonal and then another one. All right, and I'm going to end with just one more. Yours doesn't need to look exactly like mine, but you do want to try to make it appear like things are overlapping one another, meaning one thing is in front of another slightly, and that's what's going to give it perspective, make it look more realistic, more natural. Uh, after we're done with the hills, then we're going to proceed on with our tree. So a tree trunk is going to have some roots, but it's going to go up and we can create some sort of branch-like things at the top there. And you come down with your tree trunk and it gets a little bit wider here at the bottom. And that's where you can add more of these root-like pieces. And then surrounding the top of the tree trunk, you can add sort of a large broccoli kind of head, which will be the leafy part of the tree. Um, you can go ahead and erase this line here, which is in the tree trunk, because we won't need that there anymore. Then we're going to create our hills. So there's the first one. It goes up and then back down like a slope, like a mountain. We'll create another one. I'm drawing lightly on top of the tree, so I know where it ends on this side, but then I know what I'll erase over here. And then we'll draw another one that will come over here. And you can draw another little one right there. So now we've got our foreground and our middle ground. For our background, we're going to create a semi-circular or a half-circular shape that is going to be like the huge sun that is shining around everything. And then, boys and girls, we're going to finally end by drawing our... Um, sun rays. So you go, I like to start in the middle of the paper and then you start to slowly go around and a good trick to help you kind of go around naturally is to actually turn your paper as you're working. So you turn, you turn a little bit, you turn it some more. That way your rays are kind of coming out evenly and creating a nice sort of even pattern all the way around. And then we go back to the middle and we'll start turning in the opposite direction. So one, and here's another, turning some more with each line. Now, if you need to use your ruler to make your lines, please do so. You know, Ms. Jenkins is an art teacher and has lots of training, so I don't always need a ruler, but you wanna use a ruler if you are having trouble with your lines. Okay, so we have now completed our drawing. Now we're gonna move on to the really exciting part, which is different patterns and different 
um, line designs within each section. Um, trying to make sure that you don't use the same color more than once next to, next to a color. So try to make sure you have as much, um, as much variety of color on your picture as possible. So don't put orange pattern next to another orange pattern, but try to add some different things in there. Okay, so I'm going to start with my orange, and um, you can do your own designs, by the way, or you can just follow along with me and do what I'm doing. For my hill down here, I'm going to do these swirly things. You see how these are really swirly, circular shapes? And I'm not worried about how big or small they are. I'm more, more interested in variety, so I'm going to keep twirling around. I want my swirls to actually touch each other so it's creating a pattern so there's not really any space in between my shapes. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to another area of design. Now you would finish your whole section before you move on to another section. But because I want you to be able to get started, I want to show you multiple different ideas for designs. So after I would finish this, I would then start a new idea, and I'm going to just do some zigzag. So you can see I am creating a pattern. My lines can be closer together if I want them to be, or they can be further apart. But what you want is you want to make sure that we can see your cool design. Okay, I'm going to show you another pattern. That you could do um, for this one I'm just gonna do diagonal lines like this and they're side by side from one end to the other if I were to keep going with this I would go all the way till here but because I'm gonna stop I'm now gonna go the opposite diagonal so I sort of create a grid, right? Think about the number sign or tic-tac-toe. That is what you want to do. So that would go all the way through there. And then let's do a different pattern over here. I'm going to do some curved half circles. If I were to keep going, I would go to the very edge of the paper and then I would start my second layer of curved circles, just repeating the same pattern over and over again, over and over. And I could take this further if I wanted to, you know, add a line inside there to add more layering or do little circles inside there, that can also be become your pattern. Um, let's see, how about on this one, let's do this. So if I do lines like this, and then I can switch and do lines like this, and then I can do that. So I'm doing diagonals or verticals or horizontals, but the point is that I'm going in different directions for each section. So you might want to go ahead and create your sections. And then if you create your sections, you can then go in different directions within each section. So for this one, I might go this way. So that kind of creates an interesting design. And again, remember, you can make your lines closer together or they can be further apart. It really is up to you. And for anything that is straight lined, using a ruler is advisable if you need to use a ruler. Um, let's do... How about we do some violet? Let's do something wavy over here. So I'm going to do kind of like ocean waves. Or think about curly hair. You would just do the wave all the way through. They don't really overlap, but it's okay if it touches. Um, the problem with overlapping too much of your designs is that you can actually lose the pattern if it overlap too much and then it just looks really messy. So try to be careful with how much your designs touch one another. Um, you want to fill up the space, but not, not 
to make things full and messy. But then look, there's these like, spaces in between. So perhaps I could put these oval shapes or whatever works within that space, okay? Now, for our tree trunk, I don't have a brown marker right now, so I'm gonna use my brown colored pencil, but you can really do whatever you want for the tree. Um, I am gonna sort of try to mimic like bark, like tree bark, the patterns that you would actually see on a tree. Um, so I'm kind of making these wavy lines that kind of come up here. Some of them are shorter, some of them connect, some of them don't, but I would just keep going with that. And then what I decided to do with my tree is I'm going to create a pattern in here, but I'm going to overlap a bunch in here. So I'm going loop-de-doo all the way around, almost like a controlled doodle or a controlled scribble. And I'm going all the way around. And then I'm going to take a second green and overlap it. And then I'm going to go back to the other green again until I get a very full sort of dense tree pattern. Do you see what I'm doing there? And I'm just gonna continue to sort of overlap to create more density. All right, and then what I'm going to do for my sun is I'm going to make curves. Curves that go like this. And they go all the way around, all the way around, all the way around, and repeat. And I'll just keep repeating. And again, you can make your lines closer together or further apart. It's up to you. But I would just keep doing that until it's full all the way behind the tree. And finally, for my sun rays, I'm going to go ahead and use yellow, orange, and red to kind of demonstrate that sun shining. So you can do whatever pattern you want, but I really like the idea of these lines that go straight out and off the paper. I think that's interesting and it represents sort of the color and this idea of the sun rays shining outwards away from the actual sun. So I did yellow for that one. So I'm gonna do orange for the next one. And I would just keep going around, kind of creating a pattern. I would go back to my yellow on this one. And again, if you need to use your ruler, use it. There's nothing wrong with using that ruler. But again, I have lots of experience. I don't always need my ruler, but I encourage you to use your ruler. Okay, so. Um, the only thing I have not done yet is our mountains, and it's up to you. Again, the patterns in each section is all up to you, but I think different line designs within the hills or the mountains kind of represent sort of that, the, the movement of the mountain, like how it goes up and then comes back down. So that's why I'm going to do this sort of short gestural line quality, which does that. And I would do that, something like that in each one. So let me show you the finished product so you can kind of see where you'll end up. So here it is finished. Um, again, I want you to know that you do not, yours does not need to look like mine. I just want you to be creative and have a good time doing this and enjoy. And when you're done, boys and girls, please ask mom and dad to post the picture online so I can see it and give you advice and feedback and constructive criticism to help you even be better. I love you guys so much. I hope you had fun doing this and I will see you next week when we meet again to create another project. All right, take care boys and girls. Love you. Bye.